going to talk about FHH, which stands for familial hypocalciuric hypercalcemia. So there is low urine calcium, high serum calcium. This is what happens. Um, so in this disorder, the defect is going to be what we call CASR, which is which stands for calcium sensing receptor. It is a receptor that is present on several tissues in the body, but for our relevance, we only talk about parathyroid and kidneys. So in the parathyroid gland, there's the chief cell, they, you have the CASR, and then uh, that responds to serum cal calcium concentration and affects the uh, downstream BTH secretion. Now, what happens in, uh, so in a normal patient, if they have hypercalcemia, it downregulates the BTH secretion, so you have low BTH. Now, in a patient with uh, FHH, the CASR is not responding to serum calcium concentrations appropriately. It's like not as sensitive as it should be. So you need a higher serum calcium concentration in order to keep the BTH in like normal. So these patients are going to have a high serum calcium and uh, about the urinary calcium, I'll speak about it in a bit. Uh, and then there's normal BTH. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, I'm going to talk about what happens in the kidneys. So you may remember uh, from renal physiology that the calcium reabsorption of kidneys in the loop of Henle is mediated by NKCC over here, potassium channel, sodium, uh, sorry, sodium potassium pump and chloride channel over here. So the net, I mean, I'm not going to go into the details about um, calcium, uh, renal calcium handling, because that's not the focus. We want to know well about the disorder, but I'll give you as much information as we need to get uh, get to understanding this disorder. So the NKCC absorbs sodium potassium chloride. The chloride exits over here. The potassium gets back out here and sodium is getting uh, reabsorbed. And uh, the potassium gets out here and this is what causes the electropositivity in the tubular fluid and electronegativity in the peritubular capillaries. And this is what drives the paracellular reabsorption of cations like sodium, magnesium, and uh, sorry, calcium, magnesium, and sodium. Now, uh, CASR, what it does is if there is hypercalcemia, it sort of blocks the potassium exit so that there can, can be no electropositivity and thus it doesn't drive the uh, reabsorption. So all of this gets excreted. Now in a patient with, in whom the CASR is not working well, even though there is an increase in um, serum uh, uh, calcium concentration, it's going to keep reabsorption, reabsorbing calcium and magnesium. So they're also going to have increased serum magnesium and increased serum calcium, which you now understand. Uh, and so literally, if we plot this with like PTH secretion on the x-axis and uh, calcium concentration on the y-axis, it's going to look like this. If this is normal, if this subject is the middle one is normal, this is what an FHH person's graph would look like. And this is what uh, if what will happen if you increase the uh, sensitivity of CASR to, uh, to calcium. Now, um, these the patients which who have FHH, they're not necessarily always symptomatic. This is pretty much an asymptomatic disorder, but they might have incidental, uh, like, you know, high serum calcium, and then they do like a mutation analysis, and then they find out that they have FHH. FHH. Um, in patients who are symptomatic, we do have the, um, like, you know, the symptoms of, uh, high serum calcium, like hypercalcemia, 
presents with fatigue, constipation, polyuria, and altered mental status, and shortened QD interval. So these are, uh, this is like the presentation. And so the drug that uh, has, uh, has been uh, researched to be most effective in these patients is called Sinacalcinet. This works by increasing the um, sensitivity of CASR to calcium. And uh, as much as as many as 75% of the subjects that have been treated with Sinacalcinet have responded to the drug, which is a good thing. So I hope you guys understood what this disorder is about. When I studied this at first, I did not really understand it completely because um, I was not very comfortable with uh, all the um, changes that were, the uh, like the abnormalities that were happening. Uh, with respect to the electrolytes but then I studied and I found out how it works and now I feel like I can remember the serum abnormalities and the treatment for this disorder so I hope that uh, this was helpful please um, leave me feedback about whether this was helpful or not thank you so much for listening